not me. Ah, so I, I was visiting a friend. Oh, no, no. I that had a lot of people be like, sneaking into your house, Rob. great kitchen. <laughs> it, and I was it's, like, it's really weird. I'm like, not mine, actually. It was, was, a, it was a weird photo. It was like, uh, wait a second. I'm like, I had to go back to my kitchen. We, yeah, sure. they, they, that, yeah, they, their kitchen is nicer than mine. We'll just leave it at that. No. No, no. it's true. It's Open the true. refrigerator and see if there's salsa. There's yeah, salsa's, that's the truth. Their salsa is hot garbage. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're still really good friends of mine, though. You don't judge a kitchen by its countertops. You judge it by the salsa in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. Do you judge people by what they have in the fridge? Like if you open kind up of. Your... everyone does. Constantly. Too many condiments. You say you don't, you you're lying. Too many condiments. Well, I judge people on all sorts of things, so I'm the no you're just judgmental. Or like, or like, there's always the person where you like open the fridge and it's like, oh, there's 40 diet cokes in here. <laughs> Cool, you seem nothing, organized. Nothing but bottled water. I have a shelf of uh, <laughs> seltzer, not seltzer, carbonated knockoff. Um, well, I do water. too. I do too, Raj. I mean, but, let's be clear. Like, Raj I don't and buy, I into I don't our, buy the LaCroix or La, LaCroix or whatever. LaCroix. La I buy the Vaughn. LaCroix makes Chinese food. I no. just bought a 12 pack of LaCroix right before we um, connected. However, I, I would like to challenge all of my Daily Tech News Show co-hosts to the Instagram refrigerator <laughs> picture challenge. <laughs> all right. I'm in. After the, ep oh. after the episode. And we actually, all... we were talking about this the other day, like fridges around the world. You know, yeah. What's in your fridge? Hey, let me ask you something. We just bought a fridge. We just bought a uh, French door fridge. So I want to know what kind of a fridge style do you have? French door. I have, I have French the French door, door as well. Door. And I'll I'd say, like, I will say it's annoying. And I wish there was just the one. Yeah, the freezer, because half the, freezer the time side. I forget which side my stuff is on. Well, and the freezer <laughs> side is not big enough for a, a frozen pizza. Oh, wait a second. So I have the French door, but then the freezer's underneath. Uh, yeah, I, got uh, I have, I got the, I have the French go. door for refrigerator and freezer's underneath. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So the better. French door is sort of like, I don't know, it looks cool, but it's almost always annoying because you're like ah sorry no uh, the freezer life. in that drawer is kind of annoying because then you i don't know i mean i'm kind of oh, bummed about i gotta fix the ice maker my 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 fridge well that's we had someone send us a link to one of those fridge shows cooking shows in your house morgan morgan sent us a link to door knock dinners uh which was like the cable access show that i was describing but door it was on knock. the food channel hmm. I, I'm gonna put what in. What does plug. that mean? Like they knock on your door, come in oh. and say, "We're gonna make gourmet food out of whatever's in your fridge." Mm. Gourmet dinners okay. is most notable for giving Paula Dean and Tyler Florence attention. Landing okay. Dean, her television program, Paula's Home Cooking. I know wow. both. Paula Dean, known for her butter. Iron so Chefs Masahuru Morimoto and Rokusaburo Michiba appeared on the show in uniform. Huh? At, at I'd least like see, I'd like to see if they can get my seven-year-old to eat. Whatever they make, that'll be the mm. challenge. That's the real that's challenge. Like part two, yeah. That's <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm going to put in a plug for a, a show that that's, doesn't exist anymore. It's a YouTube show from Australia called The Catering Show, mm. Star, okay. starring starring two comedians who. It's basically a spoof on all these cooking shows. It mm -hmm. only ran for like two seasons. It is hilarious. Nice. It is hilarious. Well, we're going to break for Daily Tech News Show now. No. And we'll uh, come oh. back with more chip talk on Good Day Internet. <laughs> Len. Len's like, no. <laughs> Let's keep talking fridges, man. <laughs> this is the marquee part of the show. <laughs> when, when Sarah said chip talk, I thought chip. Yeah. Computer. Right. Yeah, I know. It could be, be um, you know, you could uh, think of it so many different ways. All right. Here we go. Is everybody ready? Yep. Three. Yep. Two, Amber Antoinette Ford has supported independent tech news directly for five years, and you can be as cool as Amber. Become a DTNS member right now at patreon.com slash DTNS. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, March 29th, 2019. Was going to be Brexit Day. It's not anymore. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. It's Art Prov Friday. I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Len will be illustrating our topics today. We'll check in with him in a little bit. And we're also welcoming Rob DeMillo, CTO of Nimble Collective, back on the show. Rob, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me back on. We are going to talk about a very interesting uh, trend in gaming. It's it's very similar to what we talked about last week uh, with Google uh, Stadia and whatnot. But, but Rob's got a different perspective 
on this uh, from a venture beat article about how a lot of these companies are accidentally gaming companies and we'll get his perspective on that in a little bit let's start with a few tech things you should know Huawei reports profits rose 25% in 2018, led by its fast-growing phone and devices business. Devices revenue specifically rose 45%, passing its telecom infrastructure business revenue, which was a, uh, a, a, a bit of a drop at 1.3% for its business with telecom carriers. Enterprise business was 10.3% of total revenue and rose 23.8%. 51.6% of Huawei's business comes from China, followed by 284 from Europe and the Middle East, 11.4% from Asia and the Pacific, and 66 .6 from the Americas. Apple acquired the digital newsstand app Texture last year and now part of what's uh, now Apple News Plus, which launched on Monday. So the Texture app is shutting down. According to emails sent to current Texture subscribers that point to a fact on the company's website, Texture's last day will be May 28th, 2019. If you're an existing customer, you will be offered a one month free trial to Apple News Plus. The LG G8 ThinQ phone pers first previewed at Mobile World Congress and will come to the US starting at a, uh, on a late April 11th with pre-orders available now. The list price for an unlocked version is $819.99. The G8 ThinQ includes air motion that lets you perform some functions by gesturing with a wave or a pinch without touching your phone. The camera can also use the veins in your hand as authentication. Think about that one for a second. And Lyft priced its IPO shares at 72 bucks ahead of the initial offering of 32.5 million shares, valuing the company at around $20 billion. Shares rose 20% after the debut on NASDAQ today under the ticker Lyft, L-Y-F-T. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Windows 10. Microsoft Windows 10 1809, sometimes formerly known as the Windows 10 October 2018 update, is now ready for broad deployment by its business customers. After its release last October, Microsoft had to pull the update because of data loss bugs and issues with zip files. You might have been affected by that. Microsoft re-released re the update November 13th, but took a slow approach to rollout this time. The company is close to finalizing the rollout of Windows 10 1903, sometimes referred as the April 2019 update, and let's hope that sticks. Yeah, that's the hopeful name of it, is the <laughs> is the the one right after the October update. Um, I mean, yeah. rollout to business customers means they, they've finally certain that there shouldn't be problems with this beyond the normal expected problems with any rollout. Uh, and just, they were being extra cautious with that. Rob, I was curious if, if you ran into any of this and, and what you made of it. I did not. We've got about a third of the people at Nimble have uh, have Windows boxes and we turned off our, our updates for this reason, right? So it, I actually haven't turned my back on yet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's safe to go back in the water. So I'm like, I <laughs> but are the sharks gone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and then turn it right back off in case you're worried about the April 2019 update. It's a weird thing. It was a it was a, a weird situation there. And uh, hopefully the April 2019 update will not have these same issues. Fingers crossed. It was a it was bizarre for Microsoft actually. It really was, uh, I, and and I'm not trying to excuse it, but it was very unusual. Not that Microsoft hasn't had a share of bugs over the years, but this right. was a really, really unusual rollout. So. This was the first one I I heard of that actually removed data. Like yeah, that. not good. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not good. Back in 2016, the city of Columbus, Ohio, won a $40 million Department of Transportation grant and an additional $10 million from the Paul G. Allen Foundation as part of the Smart City Challenge. Columbus is developing a smart Columbus operating system with some of that money. It's also working on an open data platform, a multimodal trip planning app, but Ars Technica's Jonathan Gitlin reports the plan to encourage adoption of electric vehicles in the city is showing the most success so far. Since 2017, adoption of electric vehicles or EVs in Columbus has risen 121%. That's compared to 82% for the rest of the Midwest. So it's rising a lot in the Midwest, but it's rising a lot more in Columbus. Uh, mm -hmm. And the average in the United States as a whole is 94%. A big part of the strategy that Columbus used was ride and drive roadshows, 
where they'd go to different places in the community or even some workplaces and allow you to do test drives. They say they've done about 7,000 test drives. They open. They also opened a showcase center where you can go and do test drives of EVs if you'd like. They did a bunch of outreach with the dealers to get them on board and make it easier to actually go in and find an EV to buy. Uh, the program also is building out charger capacity, including rebate funding for multi-unit residential buildings and workplaces. You know, before the show, we we all kind of uh, collectively did a little homework on 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 uh, on the city of Columbus because none of us is from there. Tom, I know you've been there. I never have, uh, but I know that it's known as a college town and probably progressive in the sense that something like these numbers would make sense to me. But yeah, I I I, I wonder what other data points um, make Columbus so sort of ripe for this technological. Uh, forward thinking. Well, I, I I would imagine that it's probably um, the, the car manufacturers are probably pushing Columbus a little bit because it's cold, right? And EVs have a hard time mm. in the cold, and so it, it's it makes for a good test bed potentially. Yeah, and, no, and to, to kind of say, kind of prove the concept, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. That, you know, also I wouldn't look past the fact that Columbus had to fight against around eighty other metropolitan areas to convince the Department of Transportation that it had the best plan. Uh, we're we're very used to criticizing governments for stupid plans, and there's no shortage of examples. This could be an example of a government planning something well and just mm -hmm. doing it right and saying, hey, you know what? When you get people to test drive stuff, they're more likely to get on board. When you actually work with dealers instead of just requiring them to do something and you get them on board, that helps stuff. So, you know, it may not be that Columbus had any natural advantage. It just may have been a, a really well executed plan for once. If you're an Amazon Prime member who has linked your account to Twitch Prime, you can now get 12 months of Nintendo Switch Online for free. Even if you've already paid $20 for that Switch Online account for the free year, we'll stack on top of it so you get that money back. Users get three months free to start. Then after 60 days of maintaining their Amazon Prime membership, they get a code for the other nine months. The initial three-month offer expires September 24th. So if you're interested, now's the time. I tried to sign up for this, but they require payment to be linked. So it is one of uh, those deals where they're going to uh, be like, you right. can go and turn it off, but you got to give me your credit card or PayPal yeah. information yeah, right yeah. now. Uh, so I, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to find out if this is actually unavoidable before I go ahead and finish signing up. So I haven't finished signing up yet. But Otherwise, it's a screaming deal. I mean, the idea that that yeah. Amazon would do this for Nintendo, I mean, it's not that they're necessarily competitors, but it's it's an interesting partnership. Well, it drives traffic towards Twitch. Yeah. Right? That's, that's, that's part of it. And this might be the thing that actually gets me to try a Nintendo Switch. Really? The, it's, it's only yeah. a $20 savings, but it's enough of a yeah, savings, it, huh? It, it just pushes it a little bit over the edge, yeah. yeah. I've got enough gaming platforms, so I didn't need another one, but this is like, it's kind of interesting. And you're right. It takes some gamers uh, who use the Switch and pushes them towards Twitch. It also takes mm -hmm. some Twitch people and pushes them, in your case, towards towards the Switch, yeah. which they, they may not have uh, been willing to do before. So right. it, it does sound like it's working. Um, yeah. And again, it's not like Amazon has a has a whole you know big gaming platform yet uh, that isn't Twitch. Uh, they're 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 more wanting to capitalize on what a Nintendo does rather than than compete directly with them. So I guess it makes sense. But but it, uh, a pretty great deal. And also interesting how they're trying to stop you from like signing up for Prime for one month just to get this year deal and then canceling. They're going to make you stick around for <laughs> sixty days and remember to renew it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I remember. Scientists building a helicopter that will be part of the Mars 2020 rover tested it in Martian-like conditions in GPL's space simulator. Uh, if you don't know, the Martian atmosphere is 1% as dense as Earth's. Uh, that would be like going up 100,000 feet on Earth. That's the rarity of the atmosphere on the surface on Mars. So the JPL team injected CO2 into the 25-foot wide vacuum cylinder after removing all the rest of it. Nitrogen, oxygen, argon, all the other gas has got taken out. Uh, a motorized lanyard tugged at the helicopter to simulate the Mars two-third Earth gravity. And the helicopter successfully flew for one minute at an altitude of two inches in that thin atmosphere twice on two separate days. So not long tests, but enough to make these guys feel like, you know what, I, I think this will work Getting now. somewhere, yeah. Yeah, that, that, the rover and the helicopter expected to arrive on Mars in February, 2021. Yeah, that was that was that last little sentence was the thing that made me go, what? So so being ex JPL, like the fact that they like 
did those tests in that chamber were tremendous. Um, but if I read all the articles on this topic, they all seem to imply that's it. They're not testing in any other scenarios. No, uh, it does. I, I have seen some quotes where they're like, the next test we'll do will be on Mars. That's cocky. <laughs> well, you don't think uh, well, two inches? That the test seems successful, but at very short periods of time. So, you know, it, you know, like, you, you know, uh, if you can, you know, figure out the atmospheric bar, it's great when it's locally on Earth, but yeah, actually doing was, that on Mars is very different. So. It was in a calm environment in a simulated tube in a room <laughs> in yeah. California. We got it. Well, we're it's done. Been, you're, you're you're well more versed in this stuff than I am, but that implies to me that all they were testing for was lift. Can we yeah. get enough lift in Correct. this kind of thin atmosphere? Correct. Correct. That's exactly and, what they were testing for. And, yeah. And, but but they didn't they didn't test updrafts. They didn't test like there's yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff that that happens on Mars. The the atmospheric pressure isn't enough to actually affect the the, the helicopter that much. But there are other factors mm -hmm. that I, they. As far as I can tell, has not been taken into consideration. I could be wrong, but well, yeah, I mean, they may have been taking consideration in the design, but it certainly wasn't part of this test. Right. Um, that said, I, I mean, this—if you haven't caught on, this is a UAV. This is a drone, right? Yeah. It's a helicopter-style drone, uh, but so are quadcopters, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to be if it works, uh, you know, plugging around on Mars, getting a much wider view than a rover can. Yeah. I hope it works. That's great. Yeah, I hope your skepticism is wrong. I, or I, or, or un unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, because this is uh, this is good. Mars 2020 rover, remember, arrives in 2021. It launches in 2020 and arrives in 2021. Well, if you thought the last story was interesting, this next one may surprise you. Inmates at two prisons in Finland are classifying data to train AI for a startup called Venu. The company is building a database to help businesses find contractors. Venu needs business articles to be categorized by topic, including differentiating things like Apple, the tech company, from a company that harvests apples, the fruit. Two very different companies. The data is then used to train the AI to manage that database. For English language uh, English articles, Venu uses Amazon's Mechanical Turk, but they weren't getting enough work done on Finnish articles, so they contacted the Finnish Criminal Sanctions Us Agency, or CSA, which happens to be in the same building as Venu. It's very convenient. Venu pays the CSA what it would have paid Mechanical Turk, and the CSA then decides how much of that goes to the prisoners. That's my question. How yeah. much of it does go to the prisoners? <laughs> Well, there's a whole social and criminal justice uh, aspect of this conversation uh, yeah. about exploiting criminal labor, right? That's not new. What's new is, oh, instead of having them, you know, make widgets license or, or yeah, yeah, the classic right. example is license plates. You're having them categorize articles to train an AI, which is new. Uh, two two things occur to me. One is this does seem to point the way to tasks that will still require humans, which is categorizing things to train an AI, mm -hmm. uh, which could be hopeful for future work conditions. Uh, but also the fact that you couldn't get enough fins on Mechanical Turk to, to get your training data set. I think that's interesting. A lot of English language speakers in the world, not necessarily native, who might be on Mechanical Turk, but not enough Finnish speakers. So there again is another area that you might not have thought of as, oh, this, you know, we, there, there is a, a need here that mere technology alone has not solved. Well, and the conversation can get muddied pretty quick, right? Because you think, okay, well, if you, um, you know, have a, a, a large group of people, I mean, large considering however many people are in a particular prison, doesn't even matter the country, but um, the fact that they, you know, it's, it's, it, you're, it, it's, it's, it's mandatory labor, right? And this is something that is making an AI, whatever it is for whatever company, stronger and 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 more sound based on human interaction. Does that bother anybody? You know, d d like, and, and and if so, in what way should it change? Well, there, there's a little bit of a science fictional aspect to all this, right? You've got a, a contained captive audience in, in the very literal sense of the word who are being used to train a, a, a neural net, right? And, and it's, it feels a little weird, comma, and then you step back and like, well, you know, prisoners made license plates in the US for a long time, 
which was forced manual labor. I'm well, I, and you guys have both, I, I very, very uh, uh, ineffectively tried to steer us away from that aspect of it because I don't think we can solve you that. Can't. It's not our area of expertise. <laughs> uh, but having prisoners do this is con is con going to be controversial to a lot of people. Uh, what I was what I was trying to point us at is, what if it wasn't prisoners, though? You've got two very interesting things going on. Is One, you still need humans to train an AI. Mm -hmm. And two, they the reason they resorted to prisoners was because the CSA happened to be in the building with them. If the CSA hadn't been in the building with them, they may not have ever thought of that. And what would they have had to do if Mechanical Turk, which is meant to solve this problem, didn't solve it? They Would they have had to create something within Finland? I mean, we think that like, oh, you just put it on the internet and everything's available. And this is an area, this is, a, I, I think, a very interesting example where that didn't work. Well, the, the reason you can't separate the two is because that the solution would involve money. Right, you, you well, could, and you, they are paying the CSA exactly the same money they would have paid Mechanical Turk, right? Okay. So, well, but, okay, but in and Tom, I totally get the point you're making. I think in in the example of Finland, what we've been seeing is Finland's like we just don't have enough data. Like we almost have to like force people to give us more data because we the Mechanical Turk actually doesn't work for us. That is not necessarily a, a, a case that would that that is that that matters to all countries, but that is interesting in this case. Yeah, there aren't enough Finnish speakers who are willing to work at mechanical Turk wages, uh, and that that is a point where it is, I think, relevant to bring in. And so they had to go to, <laughs> they ended up going to prisons where you don't have a lot of choice. <clears throat> uh, email us your thoughts on this feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> Uh, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day and keep up, check out dailytechheadlines.com. You can get it all in five minutes, Monday through Friday, with a recap of the entire week that comes on Saturday. Venture Beats Dean Takahashi writes that he has often divided game companies into intentional and unintentional game companies. So intentional would be the ones you think of, Electronic Arts, Sony, Xbox, etc. But platforms like Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook, he calls unintentional because the platforms were created for something else. But gaming then arose on those platforms anyway. Uh, although with Facebook, you could argue they just bought Oculus and that's really where the big games come in Facebook. But these are companies that weren't started to be game companies and are now becoming game companies intentionally. For instance, recent examples are Google Stadia, where Google said, well, I guess gaming was coming into our platform. Let's lean into it. Apple with Apple Arcade is another recent example. Uh, I know this caught your eye, uh, Rob. What is it about you, about this this sort of metaphor that that fascinates you? Well, I mean, th so the company I'm at now, uh, the Nimble Collective, where I'm the CTO, th this is what we do, right? So we are a streaming company for animation systems. So animators can get on and, and, and access GPU-based machines, uh, stream their animation software, do their work, get off, do rendering of the work, and get off. And it was interesting hearing the um, uh, the, the Stadia uh, live feed because the, the introduction to Stadia sounded very much like the intro introduction to, to Nimble Collective. Um, you know, utilizing the cloud, um, lower cost on the on the client side. You know, you didn't need as as expensive a machine piece of machinery to operate the system. Um, so all that was very cool. Uh, and they're, you know, the ability to upgrade GPUs on the fly and and uh, perform at the performance rate of a of a cloud service like like a Google. And I'm focusing just on Stadia from if this applies to everybody, uh, is a tremendous boon. Uh, if I remember the numbers right, it was something like ten point eight. Gigaflops, <laughs> like which is which is yeah, which, which, which is an, it, it's an astonishing number, right? To to have at your fingertips. Um, <clears throat> what's interesting to me about this, uh, and you know, since it's Google and they own all of the data centers, and the thing that uh, I keep coming back to because I experience this all the time is, uh, th does anybody know Steam's uh, uh, traffic like concurrent users? It's something it, a couple of years ago it was like 15 million concurrent sure. users. I don't yeah, I don't know what it there. is. Yeah. It's high up there. That's that's a lot of instances to have in the cloud. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Google or or Microsoft or whoever. But if you're expecting that sort of load on a system that's doing concurrent play, that's a lot of GPUs on standby. So I'm not sure if you're, if if your your listeners are aware. I'm sure most of them are, but um, it takes a while to spin these things up. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, think of booting a computer or a server. That's what's going on. So they have to be sitting there in hot standby. So so 
They have to be very good at predicting like how many users are going to have and how many people are going to be playing certain games at certain times and have those things ready so people aren't sitting there frustrated and waiting. And that's the part about this that's fascinating to me. And that actually is a really good point because there is going to be a part where Google Stadia uh, won't work and somebody will be very frustrated because they're yeah. timing out. And they're like, I'm trying to log on, but obviously they can't handle it. And the, and the, and the answer will be, no, it's not that they can't handle it. It's that they predicted wrong when you decided right. to, to log on and didn't have a, a hot GPU waiting for you, right? That's right. That's yeah, right. And, so and, and keep that in mind. Yeah, and that will happen. But it, it doesn't you know, undermine if, the concept necessarily. It meant it, it's it's all a matter of whether they can solve that. If if this catches on the way that they think it catches on, I don't want to hog the conversation here, but if, if this catches on the way they think it's going to catch on, it will it will rival Netflix for data transmissions. It'll and oh, yeah. it'll certainly rival anything else out there for GPU usage and CPU usage in the cloud. Because even even though controls don't need to send a whole lot of information uh, back, there is consistent information you're sending from your controller. Uh, where in Netflix you press play and that's it for right. thirty minutes to an hour. If and when you're gaming, and when you're gaming, by the way, so we 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 deal with this all the time. When you're gaming, um, you notice it, like the, even if it's even if it's like a fraction of a second or a mm -hmm. fraction of a fraction of a second, your brain picks up on it. If you're if you're firing the gun or running from the from the bad guy or doing whatever yeah, you're yeah, doing in the better. game, yeah, you, you will you will notice if there's lag. Oh, I what I what I was really fascinated by is like here are these companies that really didn't have a history or kind of a pedigree in gaming. You know, you could say the same about Microsoft, but Microsoft has been publish, publishing games since the early '80s, whether it was Flight mm -hmm. Simulator or something else. They have an understanding, and. You know, you can say the same thing about Google and Apple having their stores, but I mean, is there a point where just being a large, very, you know, very well healed and very well resourced company, you can essentially do a bunch of things, take a lot of risks that if you're a more focused game company, say like EA, that you couldn't afford to do because you have other businesses that you could rely on if something tanks? Well, I mean, you hit you hit it on the head, right? So these these are larger companies. These are companies that do have um, splinter groups inside of them working on these projects that are as large as dedicated companies like EA. So to me, it's it's not that the the resources within the company is necessarily the problem. And if they hire the right people, then I know that they are. If they hire the right people, then you know they'll, they'll get the right attention on it. Uh, it, it, it's more along the lines of um, the reason I think that, um, you know, the way Dean expresses this in his article is there's intentional and unintentional. It's it's more like intentional and backed their way into it, mm -hmm. right? Saw an <laughs> because, opportunity. Yeah. Saw an opportunity because what, what's going on is these, these larger companies have these data centers with GPUs in them and the, the, those GPUs are not being utilized all the time. And the software tries to load level a lot of it and, and they try and do predictive analysis and all that stuff, but you, like having a bunch of frozen fish in a warehouse somewhere, they've got a bunch of yeah. unused GPU cycles sitting around and they're like, oh, well, how do we make money off of this? Yeah, I mean, that may make the the whole, do you have a hot GPU ready for someone to game less of an issue if they're like, well, we're, you know, if it's not ready for someone to game, it's ready for something else. We might as well just have a bunch of them ready all the time. We do anyway. Yeah, sort of, except what they're doing is they're opening up the gate. So now, you know, they've got, you know, right. the entire state of, of California wants that that frozen fish. Well, right. except so everyone say, that emails me or talks to me on Twitter says that this is not going to work and they're not going to use it. So apparently no one is going to use this. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> that's or exactly how they're going to roll out. People who use it, or maybe the people saying they're not going to use it are lying. I don't know. Um, one of the things that came up last week when we were talking about this was I, I brought up the idea of uh, video editing in the cloud because of Nimble Collective. And there were some questions that I know you can answer, which is, how does how does your video upload work there? Because if you have a if you have a large video, uh, mm -hmm. you you need to be able to get it to the cloud to start working on it. Sure. Yeah. I, I well, if you're uh, there, there's two modes of thought here, right? If you're already in the cloud and everything you've been doing is in the cloud, then, then it's already there. there. It's already yeah. there. Otherwise, you, you just upload the traditional way, and you would upload to the system, and then and then work from there. And it, it you know if you've got a number of team members that are working on the same thing. Uh, you'll be good. But it's interesting that you mentioned video editing. Video editing in uh, the cloud is harder, a little harder, actually, than what we're doing with animation mm. because of the same reason that gaming is difficult. It, you know, the editors that are working on a video editor, as is, is you folks all know, like if you 
try and move a 30 second of a second and you're not there or the the audio lags or you're doing it's it's tricky yeah right? there's so, there's there's lag sensitivity in the actions of video editing for sure right mm -hmm. yeah. interesting well thank you uh rom for for answering that for me i appreciate it sure. <laughs> for sure yeah and also thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit you can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com if you hang out on facebook a lot well we have good news for you we got a facebook group <clears throat> facebook.com slash groups slash daily tech news show let's take a look at the mailbag Let's do it. Komei had a possible edge case scenario for eBay's image search. This was a conversation we were having yesterday and kind of scratching our heads a little bit on how this would work. Komei says, what if you just came from a foreign country and you don't know what the product is or what the leading brands are? For example, let's say you go to Asia and you want to get something similar to Ziploc or Rubbermaid or Purell or Gorillapod. Google wouldn't translate those names into the locally available brands. And people who just came to the U.S. might have the same issue with American brands, but the image search would be able to help them at this point. Of course, Alibaba, Amazon, and others are all becoming international and multilingual, and their text search is getting better. So the example above might be a little <laughs> contrived. No, it's good, though. I like that one because there yeah. always are weird, like, uh, not weird, but they're, they're always different brands for the same thing. Uh, yeah. sometimes they're even owned by the same company. They just operate under a different brand. So looking up Ziploc on eBay, all oh, Ziploc's a weird thing to buy on eBay, but just go with it. You look up Ziploc on eBay and then you click on the image and suddenly you see all these other brands of, of sandwich bags and you're like, Oh, the one that's popular here is that one. Great. Now I know. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, never buy used sandwich bags. though. <laughs> Unless you have to. Uh, thanks to Kome and everybody else who participates in our mailbag every week. And also thanks to Len Peralta. Let's check in with him. Sure thing. Yeah, you know, I love the idea of unintentional gaming companies. And that's where this image came from. It's uh, it's a uh, it's kind of taking the twister take on this whole thing of creating a game called Whoopsie. We made a video game company, <laughs> the game of unintentional platforms. <laughs> Um, and uh, it's just a family that is enjoying playing on something that isn't really uh, there was an unintentional plan. Yeah, no, I see. So, so dad's got his right hand on cloud services, and then his <laughs> left hand is on building a data center. And the next thing you know, he's built a game company. It's amazing. It's so much fun. It's a game for whoever. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's fun for the whole family. And uh, yes, you can see this right now if you're one of my patrons. Uh, at the five dollar level, DTNS lover patron, you get this right now. It's up there right now. You get it uh, at with your uh, pledge, and or you can just go the uh, alternate route. And just go to my online store, lenperaltastore.com, and get it right there. Excellent, thank you, Len. Go to lenperaltastore.com, and thank you, Rob Demillo. Absolutely. Uh, if folks want to find out more about what you're doing these days, where should they go? They should go to nimblecollective.com, or they can go to my about me page. Uh, about me, Rob DeMillo. You can find out where I am there. Yeah. Excellent. All good stuff. And that's nimblecollective.com. I'll have the link in the show notes as well. Oh, you can uh, also go, by the way, you can also go to sparklabsglobal.com. I'm there as well. Sparklabsglobal.com mm -hmm. as well. Do that too. Uh, folks, we are nearing the first of the month, which means uh, we need to push right over the goal line to get our goal of one more patron than last month. Now, yesterday I said we needed 12. Now we need nine. So over the next three days, I'm trusting you, three of you each day, Sign up to become a DTNS member, and that'll get us where we need to go. Uh, it's never been a better time. We have all kinds of cool perks available for people at the various levels, including uh, I'll have an editor's desk tomorrow talking about my thoughts about why tech executives are not stupid, but when to tell if they've made mistakes. That's coming in your feed at the $5 level and above tomorrow. Uh, Roger had a column yesterday. Uh, we've got updates on Sarah's Live With It with the headphones and, 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 and a vote for a new uh, device will be coming up in a month or so. That's all available if you become a member right now at patreon.com slash DTNS. If you have feedback for us, our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Join us live if you can. Tell a friend and find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back on Monday. Talk to you then. Remember, become a member. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>
Okay. Good show, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. That Roger, a programming note. I accidentally stopped the wrong file. So my good day internet recording will be in two files and you'll have to clip an O off the end of the DTNS file. And add a good morning, Julia. No, do <laughs> not add a good night, Rob. Good night, Rob. So I'll just use my record <laughs> then for the GTNS. Oh, man, we should have done a good night, Rob. Or no. <laughs> got should, I just, you got should, should I piece the ones together or should I just add, uh, use the one? No, no, you can, I'm just telling you. I'm just oh, making okay. sure you know what you, you do, whatever you need to do. I'm just, okay. I'm just making sure you know the DTNS recording that I made has a little tiny thing at the uh, end that needs to be. So I need to edit that. Got it. For, the, for that. And then the good day internet from me will be in two pieces. But if you've got one, then it's probably easier. Like you say, use yours. Now, good night, Rob. Now. So you, you listen to DTNS, not Good Day Internet, when you go to sleep, right? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll Although, should I, should I switch? Well, okay. I mean, you don't have to chew. You, it'll take you longer to go to sleep. <laughs> That's true. We, we can pad on another 60 or will so it. to, I don't your, know. to your lullaby. I had a dream that I had been chased by Roger down the street. Very, very, very <laughs> Whoa. Very weird. Yeah. Is what? it weird? Apple canceled the AirPower wireless charging mat. Oh, when uh, did that break while we were doing the show? Yeah, like I'm looking at it right now. Really? Two hours. Gosh darn it. I was really looking forward to this. Call him up. Looks like Apple doesn't. <laughs> Just get, get, uh, get Tim get, Cook on the phone. Get Tim Cook. Yeah. yeah. You ruined my Tim, day, Tim. Why? Or Oprah, Oprah's, Oprah's, Oprah's taking calls now. So, uh. well, now and they're together. So actually, <laughs> she, if you call Oprah, complain about this when she's doing the Apple TV thing. There'll be no chargers. You get a charger, and you get a charger. <laughs> Apple has canceled the AirPower product completely, citing difficulty meeting its own standards. After much mm -hmm. effort, we've concluded AirPower will not achieve <laughs> our high standards, and we have canceled the project. We apologize to those customers who were looking forward to this launch. We continue to believe that the future is wireless and are committed to push the wireless experience forward, said Dan Riccio, Apple's Senior Vice President of Hardware Engineering, in an emailed statement today. I'm so bummed. That sucks. I'm not, but... You were not bummed? Yeah, I'm not bummed. Did you not want this? Uh, I wanted this. Yeah, I've got plenty of chargers. I don't know why well, I needed this. Me charger. too, but I mean, I, I wanted a wireless charger. No, I mean, I, I, have, wire like I, have, I have wireless chargers. I didn't go oh, Tesla had one. Right, go back so. to Tesla. Do a little cranky thing. Uh, Related to tough engineering problems related to the laws of physics, specifically, I've heard, this is Josh Constein from TechCrunch, that they ran too hot because the 3D charging coils in close proximity to one another required very cautious power management. Basically, mm. they didn't want these things to catch on fire. Yeah. So they or should we, not have ever announced them. Yes, that is, that is a much better way to look at this. And having just had an announcement of things that aren't ready yet, granted, Oprah's documentaries probably won't catch on fire uh it does give me some pause as to you know do apple is no longer waiting to announce things until they're sure they'll come out yeah well, it's interesting i mean that mm -hmm. i always wondered about that whole thing like it like it generates a lot of heat and you, there's a lot of wasted energy going to power a five volt device i don't know it, someday it'll happen someday but it wasn't directed, was it? Was it directed at your device, or was it just you walk close to the coils and you get charged? Yeah. What was uh, Sarah? Then all no, no. This is not a trick question. What was it about it that you liked uh, that you particularly liked about that versus just buying a third-party wireless charger that's already out there? Nothing. I mean, the, <laughs> it was Apple. The, the same. Yeah. I mean, the same way that I would buy lots of Apple products that you know are designed to work with. No, but I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there has to have been something where you looked at it and like, okay, that's cool. Well, I mean, is it because okay, it can do three I mean, at once? Does you know, does the smart trackpad seem cool to you? Like some people are like, nah. I mean, I like them. It's an no, Apple you're not allowed to, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. I I didn't know if there was something else in the features of it. <laughs> it's wider. You know, the idea that you could put your iPhone, your watch, and your your uh, AirPods on it all at once. 
It's also, you know, something that Apple was, you know, cooking up. You, you know, they're, they're, you know, the naysayers go like, ah, everyone else has already done this. And Apple is just going to like pretend that they reinvented the whole thing and that they, you know, it, it was, you know, their idea to begin with. But I wanted to know what that was going to look like because, you know, as, as in, I am an Apple fan girl, certainly, but, you know, historically, Apple is really good at this sort of thing, uh, you know, sort of tricking everybody into being like, well, we weren't the first, but we're the best. So well, I wanted to see this, were, and I'm kind of disappointed yeah, that it, yeah. it seems to be dead in the water. You were expecting that when they announced it, there then they would reveal the thing that made this so much better than the other. Yeah, like yeah. I don't yeah. totally know what so, that would have been, but I was into it. Uh, whoops, I'm a game company. <laughs> yeah. For the title, you mean? Yep. In case anyone doesn't speak Roger, he was suggesting a title for the show. Yes. <laughs> right. Continue on. Roger's Roger's okay. Roger's maybe Roger's he is okay. a game. Maybe Roger is admitting he's a game company. <laughs> that was not related to the Apple announcement. Please let me. Uh, but that's a good title. I like that title. Whoops. Roger is a game company. Well, all right. <laughs> we always suspect it. Is Chi based charging specifically for AirPods? Uh, Air, Air Power was proprietary and intended to combine two different wireless charging methods. Key uh, and the Apple. Uh, uh, uh. That, okay, that's that's okay, that makes sense. That's why they had the engineering challenge. I'm like, well, all these other people are making it work. Why aren't they? That that's what it was, uh, and it was designed so that you could place an iPhone, AirPod, or Apple Watch on any portion of the map. Why isn't the Air, Why isn't the watch Qi? Then that's the other solution. To the problem is change yeah. the next generation watch to. Uh huh. You know. God forbid. That just seems unnecessarily complicated. Who is it that makes the... Am I imagining this? Or did somebody create a bowl? Did I see this at CES the other year? Like a, like a It looks like a bowl that you would sit by your front door. Mm -hmm. You would just toss things in and it would charge, and it would charge them. them? Oh. I remember that. Yeah, that does yeah, sound... I remember who made it. That but, but yeah. In, it Intel? Was... was it Intel? I Maybe it was don't Intel. remember. Let's look it up. I was like, and that, that was waiting for that for a long time too. It was like, well, that's actually a cool idea if I could just toss my watch and my phone in there while I go. Right, which is like grab a beer. most people already put their keys in a bowl. Well, right. not for you know, yeah, for for reasons of keeping them, <laughs> keeping track of them. Wireless charging bowl. I keep them on my desk. Everything else is so it's a complete mess. Uh, yeah, we yeah, keep our you're team. right. You're right, Rob. But it this was like five years ago, actually. Oh my God! Seriously, it got, it got introduced now? at CES in 2014. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. What happened to it? It just didn't never made it to market, like a thing. Before like usual time, CES things? I suppose. Well, Intel, you know, they very often come up with concepts that they then go, "No, <laughs> we're not going to do that." So, oh well, who knows. Got caught in one of those undertoes. Undertow. The undertoed. Sounds like a band. Sounds Bio like a says that Apple has not figured out the chi to wireless charging. Oh, that's very clever. It is. Mm -hmm. That see, is clever. See, see, he followed it up with I crack me up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see what he did there. Mm -hmm. I put my keys in a bowl. Yeah. They don't need I to do be too. charged. Is it a bags. cool bowl, like a special bowl, or just like a bowl that's already part of it's whatever? It's a bowl that Eileen got before she met me on some travel somewhere. And, it's and that's like, become the key bowl? It's an earthen bowl with a design on the Please outside. take my earthenware and support my community. <laughs> yeah. Having a convenient location to put your keys and other incentives. Yeah. So, so I what, I heard, what, what I heard was... This, this keepsake that that has a lot of memories and, and feelings for her. You're just tossing your keys in it. Uh, I asked first. I said, <laughs> should we use this to put our keys in? And she said, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So Sounds good. Trying to, trying it used to, to have rice in it. I don't know oh, why. So it used to sustain people. Now it's No, just... it was never cooked. <laughs> it was decorative rice. You weren't supposed to eat it. What's decorative rice? Decorative rice? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Credit price. What's obviously. that? Yeah, you know, that's where you find little mice and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> pop out their heads, pop out of that. Uh, that's decorative. That's yes, a, it is a real thing. Decorative rice is a real thing. I, I'm, no, I mean, I'm, and I'm, I'm not making it's fun. You, I, I, I don't no, know what no, that it's is. Not, Tom. It's what you Look do. With decorative you rice. All the rice. It's from not. Rice. It's not Tom. What? <laughs> When do they you, throw do you that right color it or I'm a bit, it can be colored, yeah. yeah. Oftentimes okay. uh okay. it's mm. oftentimes it's used to hold things like if you have like a not a plant, but like something you want to keep in a in a like dried like, flowers or like dried flowers, but you want to oh, keep okay. them up, right? You use right. it to hold yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Is it treated in some way so it doesn't you know attract mice and uh, <laughs> bugs? It's it's not wet. Like mice couldn't eat raw <laughs> rice, they would die. It would die. Well, because mm. the rice is dried. It's dried. Not, like if you eat fresh. it, it would swell up and it would explode their stomachs. Okay. Mm. And, and a friend sent me a photo from something at Target, which was as it was a jar filled with wine corks that had fake winery labels on them, but it was like one of these and you put it on a coffee table. And her her, her question was, Who who is this for? <laughs> like I don't like wine, but here's the thing to show that I like wine, or if you like wine, you've already got wine corks I, I have just so you know i have a, a glass vase filled with wine corks but you you drank the wine though right uh, i i do yes. i or someone in my family drank every bottle of wine that's in the wine i don't know why you would buy a exactly like, pre-filled that, like i i don't have time to drink all the wine but i want to look <laughs> like i do so yeah it was like look i'm not really a drunk but here i am <laughs> I, want to go, I want to go back to the decorative rice. Okay. All right. <laughs> because, I was trying to help you out, Tom. Because like I like I would get like if I had a bouquet of flowers, you know, you kind of want them to stand up a little bit more that's, than the water would do on their own. That's, that's functional rice. Sure. But that's not decorative. I, mean, I guess if you don't that's want to keep functional. rice, keep, keep not. mice away, just dip it in, I don't know, Roundup or something. I'm not even like, <laughs> forget the mice. That's terrible I'm, idea. I'm just like, what does it look like in a vase? The rice. Is, is it painted? Is it a different? It, like you yeah, said it like like color. like if it was like a cool like steel gray rice, that would the be only, cool. The only way I'll accept that it's decorative rice is, is if an artisan had handcrafted each one out of clay. <laughs> that's right. not rice. It that's has. Different. If you look under a microscope, it has everybody <laughs> in your um, lineage. <laughs> etched onto it thousands and thousands of people it's really okay, just well that's really very just, cool uh, there, there, right. here's right. some decorative rice all right oh, a glass lantern with colored rice and a tea light wait hmm. it's kind of like something oh, see, you would do is very cool it. okay so the colors are a big part of it sure right yeah. yeah i mean they don't all have to be colored if it's the right like tone or whatever but yeah now you're getting the idea all right. Nice. All That's right. Nice. Well, thank you. That helped. <sighs> Sometimes a picture does say a thousand things that you didn't. More in the case of rice, a million. Rice wow. a million, the San Francisco tree. Ah, parboiled rice, one of the best inventions of the 20th, early. Roger place. Chang. You did not eat rice a roni. No. Yeah, no chance you ate rice a There's no way. I've eaten it, but I've never eaten it at, in a Chinese person's home. I've never eaten it ever. I've never, never eaten it in San Francisco. I, I, <laughs> I, never I, I ate it in Minnesota. northern Minnesota when I was. I ate it in a bowl hanging off a cable car while visiting Koi Tower. <laughs> <laughs> All of them at once. <laughs> yeah, but not in a Chinese home, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Are you humming the tune as you're on the yeah. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> of San Francisco? I would carry a big knapsack and I'd just throw them at tourists. <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco. <laughs> just boxes. Oh. boxes. That used to be one of those, um, one of the, uh, what do you call it, the prizes <laughs> you give to the losers of a game show? Uh, these the are consolation your, prize. Yeah, yeah, consolation yeah. prize. That yeah. used to be that used to be one yeah. of the things they handed out at uh, if you lost at Wheel of Fortune. Like, yeah. Thank you for playing, but here's your consolation prize. Oh, right. You, right. you didn't get the new furniture for your living room, <laughs> mm -hmm. but here's a I don't know some lifts for your shoes. Here's half. Here's literally half baked rice that you <laughs> finished cooking at home. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so well, feed folks, your family for 1.5 days if you're watching this video for free uh <laughs> remember it, it costs us money to buy our decorative rice uh and rice aroni so please become a member at patreon.com slash dtns and audio listeners who are already members stick around there's more to come there's more than just decorative rice <clears throat> to talk about